Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This month, a kinky post-scarcity orgy. This is episode 473. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. We'll have a patron-funded story later this month, but today I'm bringing you a special episode. What I have for you today is the first two chapters of Hallowed Covenant, a kinky story written by Franklin Vo and Eunice Hung and narrated by Francesca Peregrin. This novel is currently crowdfunding on Indiegogo. You can find the link in the show notes. Here we go. Book One, The Blesser. 1.1 I'm not sure whether I'm hoping or dreading I'll get the cursed vial, he said. Cursed? She raised an eyebrow. Don't think of it as a curse. Think of it as an opportunity to make your evening more interesting. Many of life's trials become so much less challenging with the proper attitude, don't you think? Like, I am grateful to receive the favour of the gods instead of, I must suffer while others enjoy themselves at my expense. The luxurious white sofa beneath them floated silently a handspan above the floor as the room tore itself apart around them. In uncanny silence, a flowing mass of tiny, glittering, mechanical gnats swarmed over the wall between his apartment and hers, rending it into bits too small to see. Does that mean you're hoping you'll be the one to get the curse, <coughs> pardon me, the favour of the gods, then? She let out a light, pure laugh. If it happens, it happens. I hope everyone will fully appreciate my misfortune. Well then, I shall pray that you are chosen to experience this boon. And if you are... I promise to do my best to help you appreciate it to the greatest extent. Thank you, darling, she said. In return, I shall pray that you are the one chosen by the gods, and if you are, I promise I, too, will do everything in my power to make your evening all it can be. They regarded each other for a moment, then giggled. He kissed her forehead. You're such a delight, Avia. Why, thank you. You're not half bad yourself. Is that why you like me? Because I'm not half bad? Avia, the taller of the two by far, had a face that tended toward angular and a long wave of hair the colour of fine bone china. She was dressed for the evening in a floor-length silk dress printed with a scene of a night sky filled with glimmering stars, with sleeves slit along their length and flared at her wrists. Her feet were bare, her fingernails and toenails gleaming with the same starry night. Tomash, her companion and, until the shared wall had disintegrated, next-door neighbour, had a solid build, with strong arms and broad shoulders. He wore a silk button-up shirt of deep, velvety black and black pants with red trim. His hair, his eyes and the small metal rod through the bridge of his nose were the same cobalt blue. He put his head on her shoulder as they watched their living spaces transform, the tiny machines boiled over the floor, her apartment into his. Her quarters were as light as her hair. White walls, soft white carpet, a white bed covered with white blankets. His side was a study in shades of grey. Grey slate floor, grey walls decorated with a subtle pattern of swirls and loops, light grey blankets on a dark grey bed. Thin red lines between the slate tiles offered the only splash of colour. A door in the back opened into his studio, where the busy mechanical gnats did not intrude. As they watched, the tiles disappeared beneath the swarms of gnats, which left soft white carpet in their wake. It's like watching the tide going out, don't you think? Avia said. 
Hmm. A humming, buzzing cloud enveloped his bed. Its outline softened and blurred. The wall finished dissolving, leaving no trace it had ever been there. Next time we should decorate my way. Thank you for agreeing to do this, Avia said. I'm a little bit nervous about tonight. You'll do fine. The temple would be crazy not to take you on. She snuggled against him. That's sweet. I'm serious. This party will be awesome, even if I end up with the cursed vial. Surely you mean especially if, yes? She ran her hands over his chest. You're only saying that because you want to watch me suffer. Guilty as charged. The cloud of tiny gnats swarmed along the edges of the room, extruding platforms that sprouted like living things from the walls. A second group of gnats busied itself assembling a long, low table surrounded by soft white chairs out of thin air. You want to see me writhing in agony, he continued, crying out in anguish, desperate for a respite from my torment that will never come. Abused by all and sundry, knowing I must endure whatever indignities you all see fit to inflict upon me. If you keep talking like that, she said, I'm going to ravish you right here and now. Before our guests arrive? By the lady, that hardly seems fair. I don't worship the lady. She draped her arms over his shoulders. Now kiss me. Their lips met as the room came apart and reformed around them. Presently, Avia ran her hands down to the hem of his pants. She unfastened the button. He nuzzled her neck. A musical chime filled the air. A pleasant, directionless voice announced, You have a visitor. Now, Avia said. Seems a bit early. Who is it? High Cleric to Kill of the Blesser. Ah. Avia buttoned Tomash's pants, then rose from the floating couch and smoothed down her dress. Um, send her in. The door opened to admit a short woman with light brown skin and a wide, easy smile. She wore her long, dark hair tied back in a neat braid, save for two bright blue strands in front that framed her face. Her large eyes were the same blue as the strands of hair. She wore a silk kimono-like dress decorated with an image of a living mountain in winter. Snow continuously cascaded down the fabric. Occasional gusts of wind sent little flurries of snowflakes sliding sideways across the silk. Avia bowed low. Hi, Cleric. Welcome. Tequil returned her bow. Thank you for your hospitality. She presented Avia with a small glittering box made of thin plates of gold, edged with polished wood and inlaid with bands of copper, silver, cobalt and platinum. For you. Avia bowed again. Thank you. She set it on the newly created table. The cloud of mechanical gnats scurried out of her way. Please, make yourself at home. This is Tomash. Would you like some tea? Thank you. That sounds lovely. Avia called up a silver tray from the provider, bearing a small white pot, a number of wood boxes, a set of small silver spoons inlaid in copper, and eleven mugs. I apologise for the lack of preparation, she said as she set about making tea. I didn't expect you this early. As you can see, we're still getting ready. She gestured to the expansive space, where the swarm buzzed in the centre of the room. Beneath the rippling mass, a circular couch took form, surrounding a large round bed that seemed to be pulling itself from nothing. You honour me with your invitation, Tequil said. She sat gracefully on the sofa beside Tomash. I was delighted to accept. Your service to the Blesser has always been exemplary. Avia blushed but could not hide her smile. 
and I look forward to enjoying your hospitality. Tekeel raised her cup to her lips and turned to Tomash. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I should start by saying I worship the Lady, not the Blesser, Tomash said. In fact, Grand High Priestess Sandian of the Lady will be here tonight. Hmm. Tekeel nodded. I know her. She's lovely. I've had the privilege of offering her the Blesser's hospitality on many occasions. She smiled to herself. Avia has spoken of you during her service in the House of the Blesser. That's very kind of her. Is it? Amusement sparkled in Tekil's purple eyes. I didn't say how she's spoken of you. Does it matter? Tomash said. When you're talked about, you're making an impact. Interesting point. Tell me, what are you hoping to get out of this evening's activities? We were just discussing that, Avia said. I think we agreed he's hoping to be the one to get the cursed vial. I'm not entirely sure that's what we agreed, Tomash said. Avia laid her hand on his. You do like making me happy, right? Of course. And we agreed that watching you suffer would make me happy, didn't we? <sighs> well, Tekeel looked Tomash up and down. I can see why she might say that. The horde of tiny machines finished extruding the waist-high platforms from the wall, each topped with a thick mattress. The provider chimed and disgorged several large, flat bundles. Tekeel rose. Avia held out her hand. Please, sit. Let me take care of the arrangements. Tekeel laughed. <laughs> Old habits. I fear I've forgotten how to be a guest. As Avia set to work arranging sheets and thick white comforters on the beds, the cloud of gnats flowed back into the provider, leaving behind a large circular four-section couch arranged around an enormous round bed. Avia fitted it with soft white linens and a pile of pillows. That done, she called forth two large trays, each made of silver inlaid with fine lines of copper from the provider. She set them on the table. The provider produced eleven tiny vials filled with shimmering gold liquid, which she arranged on one of the trays, and ten tiny vials filled with a pale green liquid, which she laid out on the other. When she finished, she sprawled gracelessly in one of the new chairs across from the couch. Tekeel picked up one of the gold vials. Such a tiny thing to contain so much suffering. I look forward to seeing what happens. Even if it's you, Tomash said. Those of us who serve the Blesser are well acquainted with accommodating others, even at the cost of our own discomfort. Isn't that right, Avia? Avia inclined her head. I don't think of it as discomfort. I think of it as service. She picked up the gold box to kill had given her. Inside, a tiny dome-shaped confection, barely as wide as her thumb, nestled on a small cushion. A shiny round berry topped the tiny layer cake with bands of pink, white, red, blue and brown separated by thin, glittering lines. Avia placed it in her mouth, a complex mixture of tastes, sweet and tart and spicy, flitted across her tongue. The sensation started as a warm, gentle glow that enveloped her body. She felt a faint whisper against her skin, like a hand caressing her shoulders. A shiver ran down her back. She felt something warm and soft, like fine fur, wrap itself around her. A cool breeze touched her face, bringing with it the faint scent of pine trees and flowers. The wind passed, the feeling of fur against her body faded, and the faintest whisper touched her lips, like the ghost of a kiss. Mmm, that was wonderful, she said as the sensations faded. 
I like the kiss at the end. What a wonderful touch. Thank you, Tequil said. Avia dropped the box into the provider. Its edges flared blue as it disintegrated into dust. The black rectangle flipped closed. A soft chime sounded. You have visitors. Who are they? Tomash said. Lyran and Yaris of the Lady. Tomash grinned. <laughs> Send them in. Lyran and Yaris seemed built from the same template, tall and slender, as though someone had stretched them vertically. Lyran had a dusky complexion and deep blue eyes with cross shaped pupils beneath a spiky shock of indigo hair. Rows of small metal studs followed the contour of his collarbone, an intricate watercolour-style painting of a desert in late afternoon covered his chest. Brilliant sunlight flooded over rocks and sand. Shimmering mirages danced across the ground. Yaris was bone-pale and wore her short violet hair in a sleek bob. She peered at the world through brilliant aquamarine eyes with hexagonal pupils, both wore only short skirts and belts hung with pouches. Her chest also displayed an intricate watercolour tattoo, a large cherry tree in full bloom. A gentle breeze stirred the tree's limbs, sending cherry blossom petals drifting across her skin. Lyrin! Tomash rose to embrace him. I'm so glad you made it. They kissed for a long, lingering moment. I love the tattoos. Lyrin beamed. Yaris designed them. Ah, Yaris, you're as lovely and talented as ever. Are you two participating in the Dance of Sacrifice this year? Yaris squeezed Tomash's hands. Lyrin is. I haven't decided yet. I just... Just what? I'm not sure I'm talented enough to be the avatar of the lady. Nonsense. Tomash said. Your gifts are extraordinary. And you are such a flatterer. Her eyes fell on the trays of vials. Ooh, which one is it? If I knew that, this evening would be a lot less fun. The chime filled the air again. You have a visitor. Who? Avia said. Have you ever noticed how it never tells you who they are until you ask, Yaris said. You'd think it would just tell you. Grand High Priestess Sandian of the Lady, came the voice from everywhere at once. Show her in, Tomash said. Grand High Priestess Sandian swept in with the effortless grace of a skilled dancer, she cut a much less imposing figure than her title suggested. Tiny, with a serious face framed by hair that started out pale yellow and gradually faded to purple at the ends. Two slender braids, one on each side, hung down over her shoulders. Gold flecks glittered in her large grey eyes. She wore a short grey backless dress printed with a pattern of lighter and darker grey lines. A slit in the back of her dress accommodated two sleek tails, each covered with fine grey fur. Grand High Priestess, welcome, Tomash said. Please make yourself comfortable. Thank you. She bowed to Avia. You must be Avia. Indeed. Pleasure to meet you, Grand High Priestess. Sandian seated herself beside Tequil. They embraced Cleric Tequil, thank you for your hospitality last week, Sandian said. It was exquisite. Tequil inclined her head. I am pleased you found me pleasing. Avia set out more tea for the newcomers. Midway through, a chime filled the air. You have... Avia rolled her eyes. Oh, just show them in. Five laughing, chatting guests entered the newly conjoined apartments. Avia moved about them, greeting them all warmly. Novice Irene, she said to a woman with long pink hair and bright blue eyes ringed with black, dressed in a red and white kimono dress decorated with stylized grass. 
novice wording. She clasped hands with a tall, lanky man who wore long silk pants of a blue so dark they were nearly black, and a lightweight dress similar to hers. She turned to the other two men. Pate, Kavim, thank you so much for coming. Finally, she greeted the last of the newcomers. Say, we don't see nearly enough of each other. Pate, a short, broad-shouldered man with olive skin and hair that cycled slowly through white, yellow, turquoise and green, wrapped his arms around Avia. They kissed for a long, slow moment. Avia ground her hips against him. He winked. I hope there will be more of that later. Count on it. She embraced Kavim a tall, muscular man with ebony skin and eyes so pale they nearly glowed. He wore a short red kilt and long black boots, but left his chest bare. A slender chain hung from one pierced nipple, ending in a tiny, glowing, jeweled ball. "'I hear you're worshipping the wild these days,' Avia said. He grinned at her with sharp teeth that attested to the truth of the rumours. She hugged Sei, an unassuming woman with dark hair, a shy smile, and soft hazel eyes. Sei wore a simple sleeveless dress in rich green that shimmered slightly whenever she moved. Thank you for inviting me, she said in a voice as gentle as her eyes. I know I'm not around often. I feel like a terrible friend sometimes. Nonsense, Avia said. You are always welcome whenever you have time. Everyone, please make yourselves at home. She set out steaming mugs of tea for each of the guests and Tomash. Only after she had served everyone else did she settle into her chair. Thank you all so much for helping us celebrate the arrival of spring. Let me go over tonight's first day party plan again. She gestured at the tray of golden vials, All but one of these contain a small dose of Blessing of Fire. One contains a large dose, combined with the Blessing of Enticement, which means whoever gets it will be incapable of orgasm until he or she receives the antidote. Which brings me to the green vials. One of them contains the antidote. The others do nothing at all. When we discover who has the special vial, the rest of us will each take one of the green bottles. At that point, it will be up to the lucky, or unlucky, winner to negotiate with each of us for what might or might not be the antidote. You are, of course, free to set whatever price you like. I encourage you all to be creative. Does everyone agree to these terms? The guests all nodded. Sei rubbed her hands together. Kavim grinned. Do you know which one is which? Pate said. What fun would that be? Avia said. All of us, priestess or novice or worshipper, take the same chance. She moved around the table, offering the tray to each of the others, beginning with High Cleric Tequil. Everyone take a gold vial and we'll all drink. By the time she reached Tomash, only two bottles remained on the tray. Tomash picked one of them, examined it closely, then set it back down and picked up the other. Avia took the last remaining vial. She removed the tiny glass stopper and held it up. The party doesn't end until the antidote is delivered, she said. That might happen right away, or it might not. We place ourselves in the hands of fate. I'll drink to that, Kavim said. They all raised their vials in salute. With a barely perceptible hiss, the door vanished, leaving only blank wall behind. Avia closed her eyes. A soft, warm glow enveloped her. She relaxed into it, letting the sensation wash over her. Say and Irene sighed. When Avia opened her eyes again, she poured more tea for the guests. 
A sense of expectant waiting settled over the group. Kavim examined his empty vial. Mmm, this is nice. When will we know who got the special one? Soon, I expect, Avia said. So, tell me about the wild. Kavim grinned. It's fun. You should worship with us. I've always thought you'd be a good fit. We have the best parties. Oh, I don't know about that, Tomash said. You've never been to the ladies' dance of sacrifice. Okay, fair, Kavim said. Still, I like the abandon. Throwing yourselves into the hands of fate is freeing. Most of the other temples are so stuffy, you know. Oh, no offence, he added hastily. High cleric to kill, Grand High Priestess Sandian. <laughs> None taken, Sandian said. I worshipped the wild when I was young. Many followers of the lady have. Oh, her eyelids fluttered. Mmm, I feel warm. You're right, this is nice. I've only worshipped the lady, Tomash said. Even when I was young, she spoke to me. I've never wanted to explore any other religion. Have you ever gone to any of the other temples? Sayi said. A few times. I visited the Garden of the Quickener for inspiration a time or two. Avia snorted. Tomash laughed. Or three. And of course, I've been to the House of the Blesser many times. But the lady, she just calls to me. Have you ever thought about becoming a priest? Iren said. Sandian chuckled. I think he'd do well in formal service to the lady, but it's like trying to reason with a brick. This one's stubborn. She took a sip of her tea. I've encouraged him to... to... Her hand trembled. Oh, she said. I feel... Uh. Her pupils dilated until they swallowed up her eyes, then constricted down to points. I... I... Her hardening nipples pressed against her dress. I... Her voice trailed off. Her eyes stared at an empty point in space. One hand slid up to her breast and squeezed, as though on its own. Then she blinked and shook herself. Wadin leaned forward, watching her. Yes, priestess, he said. Pate raised his mug to hide his smile. It's nothing, Sandian said. I just... where was I? She looked around. Without warning, her hands clutched at the cushion beneath her. Her body shuddered. Avia basked in the warm golden glow while she watched Sandian writhe. Should we, Wadin said. Patience, Tekeel said. Avia poured herself more tea. She savoured it without haste, inhaling the spicy aroma. Kavim slid onto Pate's lap. Pate kissed the back of his neck. Irene sipped her tea delicately while she stroked Wadin's hair. Sei watched Sandian with an enigmatic smile. Sandian moaned. One of her tails coiled tightly around her leg. The other wrapped around her body. The fur on the ends poofed up into balls. She pressed her hand against her mound and rocked her hips. I feel strange, she said. Irene, Wadin, do you serve in the same house? Tomash said. Yes, Irene said, her eyes still on Sandian. She ran her fingertips lightly over Wadin's neck. It has its advantages. Wadin smiled up at her. When Avia finished her tea, she circled the room with the tray of green vials, offering one to everyone except Sandian. Once everyone had chosen a vial, she kept the last for herself. Sandian caressed herself openly, oblivious to the others. Her tails tightened around her. 
I bet she can do interesting things with those tails, Wadin said. She can, Lyrin and Tomash said simultaneously. Tekil laughed. Avia gathered the trays, pot, and mugs from the table and fed them into the provider. She undressed and slipped her clothes into the provider after them. When she turned back to the couch, Sandian and Tekil were locked in a deep kiss. Sandian's tails coiled around Tekil, holding her close. Tekil chuckled. This is an interesting bit of turnabout, she said. I think I like it. Grand High Priestess Sandian, may I have the pleasure of undressing you? Yes, Sandian husked. Tequil took her time, lingering over the straps at Sandian's shoulders. She ran her hands down Sandian's body, taking the dress with them. She bent to remove Sandian's shoes. When she rose again, she unfastened the sash around her own waist and allowed her dress to fall. Irene and Wadin slid each other out of their clothes. When they were both nude, Irene sidled up to Tomash. May I? Please. Irene unbuttoned Tomash's shirt with careful attentiveness. She slipped it from his shoulders and draped it over her arm. She knelt to remove his pants, which she also draped over her arm. When he was nude, she folded his clothes and placed them neatly beside the sofa. Wadin put his arm around Sei's waist. She tilted her head up toward him. Their lips met. A groan from the direction of the couch distracted them. Sandian convulsed, whimpering, one hand between her legs, eyes closed. Tequil ran her fingers lightly over Sandian's body, caressing her with exquisite gentleness. Please, Sandian whispered, please. What are the odds a grand high priestess would be the one to pick the wrong vial? Wadin said. Surely you mean the right vial, Avia said. And the odds are one in eleven, just like the rest of us. Fate is the great equaliser. Irene draped an arm around Tomash. Which one of us should be the first to offer her the possibility of release? Hmm, Tomash said. That's a good question. There's a strategy to it, I think. The longer you wait, the more desperate she will be, and the greater demands you can make of her. But of course, the longer you wait, the more likely it is she will find the antidote before you can make any demands at all. He nodded sagely and tapped the side of his nose. It's quite mathematical. Tequil led Sandian to the bed in the middle of the room. All the others, except Avia and Wadin, followed, settling on the round sofa ringing the bed. I have been pleased to offer you the hospitality of the blesser, Tequil said. She held up her green vial. I would like to propose that, in exchange for this, you offer me your hospitality in kind. Is this acceptable to you? Yes, Sandian whimpered. Avia watched for a moment, then turned her attention to Wadin. I would be pleased to offer you the hospitality of my home she murmured in his ear. Don't you want to watch them? Wadin said. Perhaps later. She ran her hand over his chest. At the moment, I'm more interested in doing than watching. Though I will not be offended if you'd rather watch. It's not every day the head of one temple gets to make demands of another. Wadin kissed her cheek. Not even such a spectacle can compete with hospitality as delightful as yours. Avia chuckled. You're in rare form tonight. She led him over to one of the slabs extending from the wall, where a cosy, inviting bed awaited. He sprawled face down. She straddled his hips and caressed his back, enjoying the soft glow of the blessing and the warmth of his body beneath her. A long, low sigh of pleasure came from the middle of the room. Avia smiled to herself. Tomash, Lyrin, and Yaris all worshipped the lady. However the evening played out, Avia hoped it might bring them all closer together. 
Wardin purred beneath Avia's hands. She spent some time exploring the shape of him, drinking in his responses. She had given herself to him and taken him many times at the House of the Blesser, but this was different. Eventually he turned over. Avia lowered herself slowly onto his erect shaft. He slid his hands up her body. In the centre of the room, High Cleric Tequil cried out with pleasure. Avia closed her eyes, focusing her attention on the heavy warmth of Wadin inside her and the delicacy of his hands as they caressed her breasts. Lie still, she said. Avia rocked her hips in long, slow undulations, relishing the slow, easy pleasure of their unhurried sex. They moved together without goal or destination, as those who served the blesser often did in their private couplings, enjoying their union without need or want of orgasm. Tequil came with a long, throaty cry. Avia pressed her body against Wardens, feeling his warmth against her. They kissed slowly for a long time, luxuriating in one another, while a second crescendo of cries came from the centre of the room. Mm, thank you. You are delightful, Warden said. They kissed once again. Then Avia lifted herself off him and rose from the bed. Warden followed after her. Thank you, Grand High Priestess, Tequil said. She stretched lazily. That was wonderful. You have held up your end of our bargain. She passed the tiny green vial to Sandian, who uncapped it and swallowed its contents greedily, eyes closed. A moment later, she let out a wail of frustration. Tequil kissed her one more time. Perhaps you will find better fortune soon. Wadin sat down on the bed beside Sandian. Grand High Priestess, would you like my vial? I require little of you in exchange, only your passivity. When we serve the Blesser, we learn to be still within ourselves. I wish for you to become nothing but a pleasure object. You will not move or speak. You will remain in any position I place you in and allow me to take pleasure from your body. He ran his fingers over her shoulder. She trembled violently. Do you accept my terms? Yes, Sandian whispered. Wadin leaned close and kissed Sandian's lips. He pulled away when she returned his kiss. No, remain still. You are a doll in the shape of a person. Do not move. He kissed her again. Sandian remained motionless, mouth parted slightly. Wadin ran the tip of his tongue over her lips. Yes, like that, he murmured into her neck. Be my plaything, not a priestess, not a person, just a thing. Avia wandered over to the curved couch next to Lyran and Yaris. The sun in Lyran's tattoo had settled slightly, following the course of the real sun in the sky. Lyran kissed Yaris's shoulder. One hand moved up to cup her breast. She ran her fingers lightly over his arm, watching Wadin and Sandian with hungry eyes. A gust of wind scattered cherry blossoms from the tree on her chest. Some of the petals floated across Lyran's hand and drifted down his arm, where they came to rest on the desert ground. On the other side of the bed, Tomash sat between Carvim and Irin, running his hand through Carvim's hair. Irin wrapped her arm around Tomash and rested her head on his shoulder. Say stripped off her dress and caressed herself, eyes sparkling, as she watched Sandian offer herself up to Wadin's use. Pate beckoned to Avia. She sat down beside him and draped her legs over his lap. He stroked Avia's leg idly while he watched the priestess give herself to the novice. Wadin continued his slow, exploratory kisses. 
Sandy had remained perfectly still, save for a slight tremor in her body and a tiny fluttering of her eyelids. He kissed her lips over and over. Eventually, he pressed his fingers into Sandian's mouth and pried it open. He formed her lips into an O, then moved her arms behind her and positioned her so she leaned backward on the bed. He kissed her lower lip. She froze, still as a statue. Wardin stood on the bed. He raised his erection to her lips and slowly pressed it into her mouth. She made a small choking noise in the back of her throat. Her eyes watered. Hello, what's this? Avia said. She moved her leg to reveal Pate's erection. Someone likes what's going on. In more ways than one, Pate grinned. Tell me of all the ways you like what's happening, Avia said. Why don't you come sit on my lap while I share my joy with you? Avia rose and settled on Pate's lap, her back to him, gasping as he slid into her. He nuzzled her back and slid his hands around to cup her breasts. What brings you joy? Avia said. Being inside you, kissing you, watching what novice Wadin is doing. Avia watched Wadin slide slowly in and out of Sandian's mouth. Look how she's drooling. She looks so helpless. Pate stroked Avia's nipples with slow, delicate touches. She leaned back against him, eyes still on Wadin and Sandian. High cleric Tequil settled onto the couch beside Sei. Sei made room for her with a smile. Tequil murmured in Sei's ear. Sei blushed and nodded. Tequil nuzzled Sei's neck as she slid her hands over Sei's body. Wardin kept up his slow, methodical use of Sandian's open mouth. Drool flowed freely down her chin to drip onto her breasts. After a time, he pushed her onto her back, then arranged her arms over her head and spread her legs apart. He straddled her chest and squeezed her drool-slicked breasts around his rigid shaft. She stared blankly at the ceiling, mouth still a round O. Avia sat motionless on Pate's lap, delighting in the simple pleasure of his erection inside her. On the far side of the bed, Tomash kissed Kavim while Irene ran her fingertips lightly, almost reverently, over his erection. Wadin thrust between Sandian's breasts in an unhurried rhythm. Wetness leaked from between Sandian's legs. A barely perceptible quiver in her arms spoke of the effort it cost her to remain still. When he tired of sliding over her body, Wadin dragged Sandian's hips to the edge of the bed. He folded her hands over her chest, lifted her knees in the air, and tucked her heels beneath her ass with her tails spread out beside her. When he was satisfied with her arrangement, he stood at the edge of the bed and penetrated her slowly. Her eyelids fluttered. She made a soft, uh, sound, her wide eyes and open mouth a caricature of surprise. Wadin pressed himself deep. He placed his hands over hers, directing her to grope herself while he slid slowly in and out of her. Her lower lip trembled. Another small keening noise slipped out. It is an interesting thing, the difference between the internal and the external, is it not? he said. You feel the blessing running through your body and the desire it creates. You feel the heat in yourself, the need. Perhaps you want me to move more slowly or more quickly. He squeezed her hands over her breasts. You feel your hands on your body. You wish that you could caress yourself on your own. All these things go through your mind, yet none of it matters. He pressed deep into her and remained there, unmoving. He shoved two fingers into her open mouth. The only thing that matters is the external. You are just a thing. 
All that is important in this moment is you are a pleasantly warm and slippery place for me to masturbate. Your identity, your desire, your feelings, they are irrelevant. When we serve as vessels of the blesser, we learn to ride this difference between the internal and the external. We sublimate our own desires as we embrace our service. Perhaps this is something everyone could learn from. He tilted his head. Or perhaps it amuses me to tell you this while I reduce you to an object. Pate's cock twitched deep within Avia. She watched Lyrin slip his hand between Yaris's legs. Yaris sighed. A gust of wind shook the top of the cherry tree on her chest, sending a flurry of cherry blossoms swirling across her breasts and down Lyrin's arm. Irin murmured something in Tomash's ear. He smiled and nodded. She knelt on the floor at his feet and, with great care, took his erection between her lips. You are a thing, Wadin continued. Your need doesn't matter. Your feelings don't matter. Your desire doesn't matter. You are merely a space for my cock. Embrace it. Sandian quivered. A tear rolled silently from the corner of her eye. Wadin slid from her grasp, rolled her face down, pulled her arms up over her head and raised her hips. After a moment's thought, he removed the pillowcase from one of the pillows and pulled it over Sandian's head. Now you don't even have a face. He knelt behind her and thrust into her in one hard shove. This opening does feel nice, he said. It's quite firm and very slippery. I encourage any of you who haven't experienced it to try it. Sandian exhaled softly. Avia strummed her clit lightly with her fingertips. Pate rocked his hips against her. She chuckled. Don't be so eager. You'll spoil your appetite. She's right, Tikil said. Grand High Priestess Sandian is a treat. She's worth the wait. Wadin breathed faster, body quivering. He came with a groan. When he withdrew, white fluid spilled from Sandian. He pulled the pillowcase from her head, revealing cheeks stained with tears. I am satisfied, he said. Here is my vial. Sandian drank. She held the vial tightly for a moment, eyes closed. After a moment, she opened her eyes, pupil still tiny pinpricks. No, she wailed. Tomash grinned. 1.2 The light of early evening sleeted through the windows. Yaris whispered in Lyrin's ear. He nodded. They conferred in low voices for a moment. Then she rose with a smile on her face. The tree on her chest grew quiet. She bowed low. Grand High Priestess, she said. Will you permit me the honor of negotiating with you for my vial? Sandian sat up and wiped her eyes. One of her tails curled protectively around her waist. The other peeked up over her shoulder, quivering slightly. Yes, she said with a tiny quaver in her voice. Thank you, Grand High Priestess. Yaris walked around the bed, examining Sandian from all angles. You have a lovely body. I am surprised you do not decorate it. It would make a nice canvas, I think. She stood at the provider for a moment, flipping through holographic projections. The blank black door flipped open. Yaris showed Sandian the small tool she'd called up. It had a long, slender, curved handle of white ceramic inlaid with a delicate filigree of gold and a tiny triangular blade at the end. With your permission, Grand High Priestess, 
I would like to use this to decorate your body. It will make light scratches on your skin. She took Sandian's hand in hers and ran the tool over Sandian's inner wrist. A pink welt rose behind it. Sandian gasped. With the blessings you've taken, Yara said, your skin must be very sensitive. I am certain you will find the experience quite intense, perhaps almost unbearable. Will you agree to allow me to decorate you in exchange for my vial? Yes, Sandion said. Thank you, Grand High Priestess. I hope this will be as enjoyable for you as it is for me. Though if it isn't, Yaris added with a sly smile, that's okay too. Please lie down. Yaris pressed Sandian down onto her back. She cupped Sandian's breast in one hand. To allow such a beautiful canvas to remain blank is a crime. She pressed the blade to Sandian's skin, just below her collarbone. Sandian shuddered. I haven't even started yet, Yaris said. Lie still. I would hate to hurt you unintentionally. She straddled Sandian with a wink and set to work, dragging the blade over Sandian's skin. A pink line followed in its wake. Sandian whimpered. Avia shivered as Pate thickened within her. She leaned back against him. His hands slid around her body, fingers probing for her clit. She purred. Tikil leaned forward to watch Yaris marking Sandian. Beside her, Sei pressed her fingers into herself with a sigh. Lyrin wandered over next to Avia. She slipped her arm around his waist. The sun on his tattoo glowed low in the watercolour sky. Yaris worked quickly and efficiently, dragging the blade over Sandian's breasts. Sandian moaned. She gripped the sheet so tightly her knuckles turned white. Lyrin hardened. Avia smiled up at him. Goodness, both of you seem to like what's going on. She ground down onto Pate, who shuddered. The warm euphoric glow wrapped around her. Can I help you with that? She asked Lyrin. You are a gracious host, he said. Thank you. Avia ran her hands over his erect shaft. A drop of wetness formed. She wiped it up with a fingertip and brought it to her lips. Pate's fingers played lightly over her clit. Avia gently took the head of Lyrin's cock between her lips. Sandian cried out, though Avia couldn't tell if it was pleasure or pain. Say relaxed against a kill, watching the art take form on Sandian's skin. I don't know which is better, the art or the sounds she's making, she said. Look at her squirm. Irene rose from the floor at Tomash's feet. Oh, pretty, she said. Does it hurt? Yes, Sandian cried. Yaris shivered. After a time, Yaris straightened with a self-satisfied expression. What do you think? Everyone except Avia and Pate gathered around Sandian. An image of a flower had taken shape from fine scratches and welts, its stem looping around her right breast, its petals opening across both breasts. The flower bloomed in shades of pink on her skin. Yaris bowed, face flush with excitement. That was wonderful, she said. Here. She presented Sandian with her vial. Sandian walked shakily over to the window that looked down on the city. Mirror, she said. The window shimmered for a moment and became perfectly reflective. She touched the image on her body. It's lovely, she admitted. When she turned away, the window went back to being a window. Thank you, Grand High Priestess, Yara said. Sandian uncapped the vial and drank. She closed her eyes for a moment, then shook her head. No, she said, the word almost a sob. Lyrin bowed. If it would please you, 
he said. I would like to propose a trade for my vial. What do you want? I think the design my companion put on you is lovely, but it needs colour. May I paint on your body? Sandian looked at him in surprise. That's all? He smiled. There is one small matter, just a trifling detail, one I scarcely even think needs to be mentioned. Please mention it. The paints I have in mind, they may contain some quantity of the blessing of fire. Oh, she shivered. With these scratches all over me, you will become a quivering, needy mess. What do you say? Sandian opened her mouth to speak, then closed it again. You planned this? We did. Just now. Sandian whimpered softly. Then, in a low voice, she said, I accept. Lyrin inclined his head. Thank you, Grand High Priestess. He went to the provider and came back with a number of small coloured pots and an assortment of fine brushes. Please lie on your back. He knelt over her, selected a brush, dipped it into one of the pots and set to work. The moment the brush touched her skin, Sandy Ann gasped. Her pupils dilated and constricted again. Avia clenched at the gasp. Pate wriggled beneath her. That was a nice squeeze, he said. An electric current rippled through the room, sparked by Sandian's increasingly frantic moans. Hungry eyes watched the brushes dance over her skin, drank in the way she writhed beneath them. Before long, Sandian squirmed ceaselessly, eyes half-closed. Lyran placed his knee between her legs as he worked. She undulated, grinding against his leg, alternately moaning and whimpering. Her cheeks flushed. Oh, she said. She looped both tails around Lyran's leg and pulled it tightly against her. Oh! Lyran picked up a different pot. I'm sorry, priestess, he said. The green contains the most blessing. I cannot say if that's why my companion chose a floral motif. This will be intense. He dipped in his brush and began tracing the line of the stem around the side of Sandian's breast. Sandian went rigid. Please, she cried. Just think, Lyran said. If my vial contains the antidote, how much fun you can have relieving your need. And if it doesn't, how much easier it will be to agree to whatever other demands may be placed on you. Sandian moaned. One tail snaked up Lyran's leg to twine around his cock. It stiffened. Her tail gripped and relaxed, gripped and relaxed until he shuddered. That's very... Uh -uh. Distracting, he said. Sandian kept playing with him while he painted. By the time he was finished, both of them squirmed with need. He straightened and set his brush down. There, he said. That looks... looks... He trembled. His eyes closed. Sandian wrapped one tail around his waist to hold him while the other stroked his cock faster and faster. He groaned. His body shook. A geyser of white gushed from his cock across Sandian's body, splattering the painting with thick goo. He tried to pull away. Both tails tightened their grip. With a mischievous grin, Sandian sat up, took his head in her hands, and kissed him roughly while her tail worked his shaft. His groan became a cry of anguish. She kept a tight hold on him, kissing him deeply until he came again. Another gush splattered her breasts. Sandian released him, eyes bright. Cum dripped down her body. She plays rough, Pate said. 
You sound like you approve, Avia said. His cock twitched. Oh, you feel like you approve too. Lyrin handed Sandian his vial with shaking hands. Sandian drank its contents greedily. After a moment, she closed her eyes. No, she whispered. My turn, Pate said. Avia lifted herself off him with a tiny flash of disappointment. Priestess, Pate said. I would like to offer you my vial in exchange for knowing the pleasure of your mouth. I want to know that you give me this pleasure of your own volition, and that you are willing to work to make it happen. He leaned close and whispered in her ear. A flicker of surprise crossed her face. He straightened. Is that acceptable to you? Her tail stood straight up behind her, quivering. The end of each tail poofed into a bushy ball. She bit her lower lip, hesitant. Maybe I can assist with the negotiation, Irene said. Priestess, I do not know what he is suggesting, but if it will help you decide, I would be pleased to offer you whatever pleasure I may while you service him. Assuming this is allowed by Pate and our host, that is. Avia smiled. It is. Most definitely, Pate said. I... Sandian looked down. Very well. I accept. Pate beamed. Excellent. He summoned a metal ring and two coils of rope from the provider. He pressed the edge of the ring against the wall. Blue light crackled around it as it bonded to the wall. Tomash raised an eyebrow in Avia's direction. She shrugged. Irene, thank you for your generous offer, Pate said. If you will please lie on your back with your head near the wall, I would be grateful. Of course. While she got into position, he turned his attention to Sandian. Priestess, please place your hands behind your back. He bound Sandian's wrists with one of the ropes, then wrapped the other loosely around her neck. He led her to where Irene lay on the floor. Please kneel. Sandian knelt, straddling Irene's face. Globs of warm goop slid down her body. Irene wriggled. Pate tied the end of the rope around her neck to the ring that was now fused with the wall. When she was secure, he stood in front of her, erect cock still glistening with Avia's juices. He bowed. Priestess, if you please. Sandian parted her lips and leaned forward to take him into her mouth. Irene slid her tongue between Sandian's folds. Sandian moaned. The rope tightened around her throat. Her moan ended in a strangled choke. Her tails curled around Irene's breasts. She strained to bring Pate deeper. He backed up until the rope constricted her neck when she took him entirely in. Make me come, he said. Sandian bobbed her head on Pate's shaft. With each stroke, she made small, gagging, choking noises as the rope pulled tight against her throat. Irene's tongue danced over her clit. Pate caressed Sandian's hair. Deeper, priestess, he said. Show me how much you want to pleasure me. Sandian undulated her hips on Irene's face. Irene moved her tongue faster. Sandian forced her head forward, taking Pate deep, coughing and gasping. Pate remained still, letting Sandian do the work. She flung herself into the task with enthusiasm. Drool spilled from her lips as she choked herself for his pleasure, grinding against Irene's face with frantic urgency. Avia watched with hungry eyes. She stroked her clit lightly, basking in the little ripples of pleasure that vibrated through her. She drank in every detail. Sandian's strangled moans, the quiver in her legs, the way the rope pressed against her throat the desperate desire in her eyes. 
Wardin and Tomash sat down on either side of her. She reached out to caress Tomash's erect cock. Wardin kissed the side of her neck. You look like you wish you were in Sandian's place, he observed. I do, Avia breathed. Why? To give myself so exquisitely, to show that I will endure such discomfort in order to serve. It's magnificent. There is such beauty in her service. Look how eagerly she suffers to give him pleasure. Her cheeks flushed. It's inspiring. Wadin nodded. I know what you mean. This is what motivates us to serve the blesser, is it not? Avia whimpered, eyes fixed on Sandian. She grabbed Tomash with both hands and kissed him urgently, tongue slipping between his lips. Pate's moan dragged Avia's attention back to the spectacle. She watched his body go rigid. A split second later, he groaned as he came. Sandian leaned forward. The rope pulled tight. She gagged and coughed as he gushed. White goo poured from her mouth and splattered on Irin's body. Irin giggled. Pate withdrew. Thank you, priestess, he said. Irin kept licking, her tongue flicking over Sandian's clit. Sandian panted and shuddered, eyes glassy. Pate uncapped his vial and raised it to Sandian's lips. She swallowed its contents, still grinding against Irin's face. Her tail squeezed Irin's breasts. Irin purred. Without warning, Sandian shook and cried out in ecstasy. She strained against the rope, gyrating against Irin's eager tongue. She came again and again, each orgasm leading into the next, bucking her hips against Irin's probing tongue, the rope taut against her neck. The door reappeared with a faint crackling sound. At last, Sandian relaxed and lifted herself up off Irin's tongue. Irin sat up, eyes shining. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of that, Grand High Priestess, she said. That was lovely. Pate untied Sandian and embraced her tightly. Another moan came from across the couch, where Yaris sat atop Lyrin. She impaled herself slowly on his erection. He shuddered. Wind tossed the tree on her tattoo. Leaves blew across her body and down Lyran's chest to settle on the dry desert sand. Sandian walked unsteadily to the couch and sat next to Avia. That was... Whew, she panted. Lines from the rope still showed on her neck. You host interesting parties. With the antidote found, the party changed... Those guests who'd been denied an opportunity to negotiate with Sandian for their vials grumbled good-naturedly, but they all accepted that fate, or randomness, which is often the same thing, works in mysterious ways. Avia took Sandian's hand. Please allow me to serve you, she said. She led Sandian into the bath, where she gently washed the goo from the flower painted on her breasts. The water did not soften the design. They returned to the party, now clothed in white silk robes. Irin summoned a tray of wine glasses from the provider and offered them to the other guests. The sun outside and the sun on Lyran's tattoo kissed the horizon. The last of the cherry blossoms fell from the tree on Yaris's chest. Darkness settled over the image. A pale moon rose, large and yellow, silhouetting the branches. Carvim reclined on one of the chairs, sipping his wine, while Wadin knelt in front of him and sucked him with long, slow strokes. He closed his eyes and moaned softly when he came. High Cleric Tequil and Grand High Priestess Sandian chatted in low voices. Tequil smiled often and touched Sandian's arm. 
The others paired or tripled up, found a bed to play on, then returned to the sofa to socialise in the warm, post-orgasmic afterglow. Avia moved about the room, lending a hand, or a couple of times a tongue, where it was desired. She watched Say ride Lyrin to a long, shuddering orgasm. She took Carvim's shaft between her lips, gently bringing it to full erection, then smiled when he led Irene to one of the beds to take her slowly but thoroughly. As the party wound down, Avia collected the empty wine glasses and fed them into the provider. Irene, now dressed in a white silk dress printed with pictures of orange and yellow fish, embraced her warmly. Thank you so much for inviting me, she said. I hear you want to become a novice of the blesser. Is that true? It is, Avia grinned. The first time I did service as an outsider to receive the blessing of union, she spoke to me. I've dabbled a bit with the lady, but she doesn't call to me the way she does Tomash. I've served the blesser many times informally, but I think I would like to join the priesthood and serve more formally. You will make a great cleric, Irene said. Avia blushed. She's right, Tequil said. You will be a fine member of our family. In fact, once you've completed your initiation, I think I will assign you to the house where Wardin and Irene serve. Irene's face lit up. That's wonderful! Eventually the guests said their goodbyes. Sandian was the last to go. She lingered in the doorway for a moment, her pupils tiny dots. Thank you. I had a lovely evening. May the lady bless you and Tomash both. I hope he isn't too disappointed I got the antidote when I did. Avia laughed. I'm sure he'll get over it. They embraced for a lingering moment, then Sandian departed, leaving Avia and Tomash alone. That went well, Tomash said, though I'm a bit sad I didn't have the opportunity to barter with Sandian. Oh? Avia said. What would you have bartered for? Oh, you know, I'd have thought of something. I like what Wardin did, turning her into a sex doll. There's something rather intoxicating about using someone's body as a masturbation toy. Is that so? Avia ran her hands over Tomash's chest. He had put on a baggy pair of silk pants in brilliant blue, but was still topless. Is that what you were doing the night we met, when I was performing service to the blesser? Were you just using me to masturbate? Of course not, Tomash exclaimed. I was using you for good luck, too. Did it work? I met you, didn't I? Touché. She drew closer. Is there anything I can do to assuage your disappointment? I don't know. Is there? Avia smiled a lazy smile. She let her fingertips play over the bulge in his pants. I'm feeling very accommodating this evening. I would like to think I might be a satisfactory pleasure object. She let her robe slip from her shoulders. Feel free to release whatever lingering frustrations you may have on or in my body. Tomash spun her around with a growl. She offered no resistance as he dragged her to the window and pressed her against the smooth glass. Three stories below them, the city spread out in the late evening darkness. Here and there, drone lights bobbed, escorting people along the walkways. Light streamed out around her into the gloom. He forced his hand between her legs. She spread them with a moan. He held her pinned to the window and thrust into her from behind, forceful, insistent. Avia cried out at the shock of his entry. Down below, a few drone lights halted where people stopped to watch. Avia relaxed into the ravishment, meeting his roughness with compliance, lost in the lingering warm glow and the feel of his demanding, insistent cock inside her.
He bit her neck as she pressed back against him. Far below, a crowd gathered. Avia purred. Tomash came with a howl. Warmth flooded into her. When he was finished, he released her and slid free. Avia knelt at his feet in front of the window. She raised his softening cock to her lips and, with exquisite care and gentleness, licked him clean. You are in an obliging mood tonight, Tomash said. I am. Avia caressed his hips. She took the head of his cock between her lips. Slowly, with patience and persistence, she built him up again, using her lips and tongue to coax him back to arousal. Would you like to pleasure yourself with me again? Tomash grabbed a handful of her hair and half pushed, half dragged her to one of the beds. She let out an oof when he shoved her onto the bed. She parted her legs. How may I be of service? He threw himself onto her. A moment later, he entered her once more. Avia sighed as he impaled her. She wrapped her arms and legs around him, holding him close. Yes, like that. She ran gentle hands up his back. Pleasure yourself with me. Use me like you did the first night we met. Do you remember? I was doing service to get the blessing of union for a party. You came into... Oh into the house to receive the favour of the blesser. You saw me there. Tomash thrust faster, panting. His eyes glazed. He groaned. Yes, Avia said. There it is. Make me the instrument of your pleasure. Yes. Tomash roared. His body shook. Avia held him close as he spent himself in her. When it was over, she rolled on top of him, still joined with him. She leaned over to kiss his lips. I was delighted when you came back the next night, and the night after that, she said. When I was finished with my service, I was surprised to hear from Cleric Benjen. He said you were so shy when you asked him if he would give me a message from you. She rocked her hips in small motions, careful not to dislodge him. You seemed happy when I called you. Mm, I was, Tomash said. He ran his palms lightly over Avia's breasts. You're amazing. I think you will make an excellent priestess of the blesser. Cleric, Avia said. Ah, oh, right. I've always wondered about that. What's the difference? Many of those who feel called to serve the blesser do not fit so neatly into priest or priestess. Avia ground her hips against him and was rewarded with a moan. Bit by bit, he hardened inside her. His eyes rolled back. Oh, what are you doing to me? I think there's still some pleasure left in you. She put her hands on his chest. Close your eyes. Let me find it. Tomash relaxed beneath her, eyes closed. Avia moved atop him in a slow, measured rhythm, encouraging his body to respond. When his breathing changed, she increased her tempo. Eventually, he came once more, a gentle, slow tide. They fell asleep in a tangle of arms and legs. And that's our story. If you'd like to hear the rest of this novel, back the Hallowed Covenant crowdfunding campaign over on Indiegogo. What will Avia discover in the House of the Blesser? What other repercussions will this party have? To find out, visit www.indiegogo.com slash projects slash the dash hallowed dash covenant. You can find the link in this episode's show notes. You have been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. Theme music is composed and performed by Mouse Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Until next time, listen hard. <laughs>